Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Murbering Millennial Podcast. I'm your host, Jill, and we've got another really great special guest lined up for you today. But before we get into that, I would love to ask, please, if you wouldn't mind, if you love what you're hearing, if you love the show so far, would you please rate it, comment, and share it so that way it helps the show get discovered. Also, if you've been following along on my journey through Instagram, it's been a little silly over there, but I've been doing a no pants challenge for 30 days and we are on day 15 of not wearing pants. I only wear pants if I'm working out or if I'm just lounging around the house. Truly, I don't know what inspired this. I just woke up one day and I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear a dress for 30 days and this is just where we're going with it. And on day 30, I will share what I've learned throughout it. And I have learned quite a bit. I have been embracing my own femininity so much more than before and showing up better, I feel like, each day. I don't At least for myself, I feel more productive each day. Um, and I've been caring a little bit more. Like I just make sure my hair is a little bit more done and stuff. It, but it hasn't stopped me. Like yesterday, I wore a t-shirt dress. This was probably the most casual dress I've worn out of the whole thing. But I wore a t-shirt dress yesterday mostly because I need to do laundry and wash all of my dresses that I've worn for the last 15 days. Don't judge me. I take forever to do laundry. This is why my husband does it. Uh, so <laughs> I needed to catch up on it. But also, I was really just taking care of a ton of yard work yesterday. We were cleaning the outside of the house planting so many plants, seeding seeds and stuff. So I just wore a t-shirt dress, still a dress. It still counts. And I wear bike shorts under every dress. So it doesn't matter that I wore them under a t-shirt dress. I wear them under everything. If you're not wearing bike shorts under a dress or a skirt, do it. It's going to change your life. It's going to stop all the chafing and you never have to worry about bending over, especially as a busy mom. It's going to be your best friend. But anyways, I played wiffle ball. We have like an entire cul-de-sac and neighborhood wiffle ball game yesterday, and I played it in the t-shirt dress. So still did that. <laughs> I haven't worked out in clothing yet, but I did find a clothing company that makes modest fitness clothes, and they make skirts and stuff for working out, like modest ones. They, they kind of go down to knee length and stuff. It was a little intriguing. I'm going to look a little more into it before I share more. Um, But anyways, we are on day 15 of the No Pants Challenge. I have 15 more days to go. And at the time of this recording, I am prepping for a very large weekend with my son's birthday party and my birthday, but my birthday's forgotten. So it's all about my son's first birthday party. We have a ton of family coming in. So very much looking forward to a very busy weekend of still not wearing pants and only wearing dresses and skirts. So make sure you're following me on Instagram for this silly challenge, but it's honestly been so eye-opening to the femininity that... I've been embracing, but also just the comments and messages I've received from fellow moms who have also been embracing this and finding their days to be more productive and they're finding more joy and enjoying their days and showing up as a better version of themselves simply because they put on a dress. So make sure you're following along on Instagram at mer uh, bearing millennial. There's two underscores between the words. Uh, so it's mer underscore bearing underscore millennial on Instagram. It's a long story, but my Instagram got hacked and I lost my old handle. So if anyone knows how to fix that, I would be forever indebted to you if I can get my old handle back. Not my old account, but I just want the old handle back. Okay, I'm off on a tangent now and, you know, this is just how we roll here. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the recording with my Dear friend Abby, who I've been friends with oh, through the interview, I think we found out that we were coming up on like six years or something of friendship. So I'm really excited to have her as my special guest. So let's go ahead and jump on over to that recording. Hello and welcome to the Mer Bearing Millennial Podcast. I am Jill, your host. And today I am so excited. I have a dear friend of mine. Oh my goodness. I don't even know how long it's been that we've been friends. It was before I had Gemma. So four or five years now that we've been friends. Um, I have my friend Abby with me. Yeah, five and a half years. Um, I have my friend Abby with me. She honestly, if I'm if I'm being honest, Abby has been one of my mom inspirations in my life. Um, I look up to her all the time. uh, And it sucks living, you know, like 600 miles away from her now. um, But she has been my inspiration for wanting to cook healthier meals around my family and living more holistically more natural. And I have learned so much from her over the years. Uh, and she's just, you are one of my role models, Abby. So I'm so <laughs> excited to have you here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about cooking from scratch and prioritizing health as a mother 
So I'm excited to dive into this. Abby, go ahead. Tell us about yourself, who you are, and what you do. So as Jill said, I'm Abby. Um, I work part-time, and I'm a stay-at-home mom. So most of my time is spent at home with my two boys, who are seven and five. We do We homeschool, so I'm also homeschooling them through second grade and kindergarten right now. And so we spend most of our days home um, learning and playing and cooking and cleaning and doing all the things and just living our lives. And uh, I work, like I said, I work part time. So I work for a chiropractor and naturopath in, in the area where I live. So I do that four evenings a week. And then the rest of the time I spend with my family. So that's who I am and what I do. Awesome. So have you always been super health conscious um, and like eaten healthy in your life? Like and if, if you haven't, like what sparked those changes? Uh, it's evolved over the years for sure. It wasn't always that way. Um, I feel like from a young age, I was really conscious of health. I'm putting this in quotes because as a young kid growing up around diet culture and Uh, that kind of stuff. That's really like a skewed view of what health really means. Um, It was confusing as a kid. So I had to evolve in my own way to find out what healthy really meant to me personally. So I really started to care more when I was in my teens uh, because I knew what I was putting in my body was ultimately affecting me because I didn't always feel so great. And I wasn't really sure why. So the first thing I turned to was like, let me try to eat healthier. Uh, So I started focusing more on like whole foods, like fruits and veggies, like healthy proteins, like meats and eggs and stuff like that. Um, So that's what health really became to me over the years. And from there, it kind of just snowballed. I love to learn about, you know, foods and why they work for some people and why they don't and fueling my body the best way it needs to be, plus the boys and Jared, my husband. So we're all very different, but it's at this point, it's kind of finding quote healthy that works for us. It's very broad. So that's where we're at with that right now. So I love that you said about figuring out what healthy meant to you. So what does it mean to you to be healthy since it's so different for everyone? Sure. So I think, um, I don't like to label I don't like labels. I'll just, I'll just put it that way. So I don't necessarily demonize certain foods. Like whenever the boys and I grocery shop, because I take them with me, we do everything together. So if we're in the grocery store, we're always reading labels to make sure there's no, you know, processed oils, uh, additives, um, certain chemicals, like they know what to look out for in, in ingredient labels. So those are the things that I teach them and I'm very open with them about why we avoid certain things in our food and how consuming those things could potentially affect us. So I'm, I'm about educating, especially the boys, because there are, I do have like a definite no list of things we do avoid for sure. And they know what those things are, but I don't necessarily like demonize those things because I don't want them to be scared of food. I want them to enjoy it. And I want us to enjoy it like as a family in the healthiest way possible for us. So that means just like cooking basically everything from scratch, uh, growing things in our garden, uh, canning all summer long. I just recently started making my own cheese, sourdough, like all the gluten-free baked goods, like that's really wholesome to me. We have chickens, so we get our eggs in our backyard. So like, that's a very wholesome process. Like they understand where food comes from. It doesn't just show up. So mm-hmm. that's, that's how it's been working for us. And it's a constant evolution. Like it's a long process. You can't just do it overnight. So I think the basis of it all starts with education and understanding where your food comes from and why it should just be, you know, pure, and how it starts that way. Love that. And the cheese, I have been seeing the cheese, and I actually told RJ, it was like, when we get back to Pennsylvania, (laughs) that's going to be my next thing that I need Abby to teach me, because I've gotten, I've gotten the sourdough, so we're doing, Mm -hmm. doing pretty well with the sourdough bread, and that took 
years because I was following you for years on just that alone and I was so terrified of sourdough Mm -hmm. um and then I told RJ I was like okay when we get back like we'll have access to that raw dairy farm again and I'm gonna go to Abby and she's gonna teach me how to make this cheese because I want to learn how to make this so bad yeah it's super fun I was scared to do it for a while I've had my equipment for a good many months and I did some research I got like an online class and I just had to jump in and do it. And it's, it's super fun. It's not as hard as it looks. Um, definitely probably one of the most rewarding processes ever to like cut your wheel of cheese and like shred it for homemade pizza or something like that to me is like the coolest thing. That's awesome. So how do your kids do with that? I mean, we live in a culture where it's so common and normal to just feed our kids whatever is fast and easy and quick. So that way we can get to doing whatever we're doing. Um, and oftentimes full of sugar and everything. So how do your kids do with all the healthy eating and all this eating from scratch? They are really champs about it um, because I think because we started with them when they were babies, um, Mm. like baby led weaning for us was like, they eat what what we eat. Um, Sure. Like when I had Oliver, it was a little bit different because he was number one. Obviously you have to learn as you go. Um, We did rely on some of those pouches at the time when he was a baby. So he loved those, but it was never anything like, you know, packaged snacks or anything like that. Like if, if it was a packaged snack, then I was strict about what I, what I picked out. They're the weird kids that love to eat like olives as a snack (laughs) Isaac routinely will eat like smoked oysters out of a can because he loves them so much yeah he's he's one of those kids um (laughs) so they just it becomes natural whenever you do it so they're just used to eating you know nuts and fruit for a snack or like yogurt with honey homemade muffin that kind of stuff like that's just our normal and I I prioritize it. I really do. And it does take planning and it does take work, but it's really, really important to me that they understand like nourishing their themselves is super important. Like from a young age, I wanted them to understand that. So it's probably one of my top priorities with them just so they grow up to be adults that take really good care of themselves in that way too. I love that you use the word prioritize also. I feel like that's such a key word, um, especially within this part of motherhood whenever it comes to fueling our families. So uh, talking like before, you know, we live in that world of fast food and packaged and packed schedules. So how do you, how do you prioritize the healthy eating for your family? How do you make a plan for that? And do you have any tips for fellow busy moms who might be listening? So I, uh, I use my instant pot a lot. (laughs) <laughs> the instant pot is awesome, uh, especially since I work too. Um, I'm usually making a dinner before I go because I start around three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm not home for dinner time. So I usually prep something for them. So it's ready, ready to go. So a really easy thing I've been doing lately is I've been throwing a chicken in the instant pot. I chop up like some sweet potatoes and veggies and they just pop those in the oven and roast them and it's ready to go. Like a chicken in the instant pot takes like 90 minutes, if that. So it's kind of just, you put it there and you forget about it sort of deal, but it's a whole food. So even if they just had the chicken and the broth that was in the pot, that would be a meal in itself. So if they don't get to the veggie, then it's not such a big deal, you know? So that's, that's a really easy option for us. Um, we don't do a ton of traveling, but when we do travel, um, it's easy stuff like uh, baby carrots or dried fruit, even like fresh fruit, apples, bananas, cheese sticks are super easy and easy to travel with beef jerky. Like I'll even, I'm even one to just throw leftovers into a, like a container and pack those in the lunchbox. Like it's not a big deal. Like you don't have to necessarily be packing like a sandwich for lunch the next day if you have leftovers in the fridge so that's that's kind of my motto like use what you have don't buy anything extra because it can be not super budget friendly especially when you're cooking this way and 
you know, like prioritizing this kind of stuff to just be buying all this food all the time. So I'm also known to like get down to the absolute last crumb in the fridge. Like the last thing we'll have in there is like condiments and a bag of radishes, but like <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, you know, like use what you have right. um, and just make it work. What are some things then that moms could do right now to begin implementing some healthier habits in their home around food? I think if you want to, if you want to change one, if you know you want to change something, start with one thing, like don't do it all at once um, because it's, it's overwhelming. Like I remember the first thing I did probably back in my teens and I was probably 17 as I tried not eating gluten. So I did that for a while and I noticed that I felt pretty good. So I kind of just kept it up. And then from there I went to like no additives, you know, like I was, I was more aware of what was in my food. Like I was reading labels from there. I went to did some research about like organic versus conventional produce. That's what, that was kind of my next step. From there I went to dairy, you know, like raw dairy, pasture dairy, conventional dairy, like it's, it's a stepping stone sort of thing. Like you have to do one step at a time. Like otherwise you're just going to drown in all the information that's out there and just give up. Like it's too hard to do it all at one time. So prior the prioritize whole foods, I think is the most important thing, but don't necessarily like stress out about where it's coming from until you're ready to get to that step. And I love that you said prioritizing the whole foods because literally my next question for you is going to be what foods would you recommend moms to avoid for themselves (laughs) and their kids? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, so typically like in our house anyway, we we don't eat processed food whatsoever. Um, We're picky if we go out to eat like we, I mean, we don't eat gluten in our house because we do have a couple family members that have allergies. So like one of the boys and Jared, um, we have to be careful about that stuff. So we make sure we're going somewhere that has good options available if they don't. And we like read ahead and see what, see what we can get that'll work. We definitely are careful. Like if we are going to a party or something, we always eat a snack beforehand and I'll pack stuff mm-hmm. in the car just in case, because it really is that important to me and important to us as a family to stick to what we believe in. And that's yeah. taking really good care of ourselves and like not eating crap. Like even if it's at a party or if it's at a friend's house, and it's just really important in that that to us is not worth the um the I guess some people would consider it cheating um and like you know eating something at a party that they wouldn't normally eat it's just not worth it in our minds so that's something that we usually try not to do basically processed foods (laughs) anything that's not just like grown or you can do in your own house or (laughs) buy from your local farmer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, so with the avoiding foods, the one of probably the most, arguably one of the most controversial ingredients used in food would be sugar, right? Mm-hmm. So what would your opinion be on sugar for kids? Because there, are, I feel like I'm seeing so many health and I'm using air quotes, experts and stuff, the Instagram mm-hmm. influencers and stuff say even fruit is bad for you because of the sugar I don't believe that um but like like I personally believe that anything I make from home that I put sugar in like I know where it's coming from and I know what's in it and I know how it's being made so I'm cool with my kids eating that but if it has added sugar in it from other ingredients or like the packaged foods we do our best to avoid that so like what's your opinion on sugar then for kids I definitely don't demonize it like kind of what I was saying in the beginning because I don't want them to be ever grow up to fear foods or food groups um, unless it's something they need to strictly avoid for like a health reason but sugar I definitely don't super limit in our house like they're allowed to have treats granted 99% of our treats are something that we make in our own house and I know where it's coming from so 
that's that's like a really wholesome form of a treat food or something sweet that they can eat like you know after dinner or something I think it's important to identify the type of sugar kind of what you were saying an ingredient we avoid is obviously like high fructose corn syrup that's like a huge buzzword nowadays so we definitely avoid that so like anything with that or sugar like fake sugars um any processed sugar basically so like cane sugar is something that we'll use in our house like organic cane sugar maple syrup honey those are all really wholesome forms of sweeteners. So like, those are things that I use to bake with all the time. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to let the boys have that kind of stuff. Cause I, I don't want them to be like missing out on anything. Cause I know a lot of people are like, Oh, why don't you just let your kid, you know, like do Halloween or like have Halloween candy. I'm like, well, we bring it home and we swap mm-hmm. it out with, stuff they know and they understand is like within our guidelines because like I said before Mm -hmm. they know how to read a label so that's something I taught them to do and they can they're kind of making that choice on their own at this point which is kind of cool to watch because they can literally look at the label and be like oh yeah I see this 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 I'll switch it out for that and I'm like okay cool like I didn't even have to say anything it just (laughs) you just plant the seed and it it's there like is it going to be perfect all the time? Probably not. Like they're going to be independent teenagers and adults at some point in their life and like make choices that I necessarily wouldn't make for them, but that's not, that's not my job anymore. So like I'm doing my job now by like teaching them this stuff and it's kind of just, we have to go from there. And I just want anyone listening to know that the stuff that Abby makes at home, listen, my husband has basically invented the Abby standard of food, okay? <laughs> like, he is, like, one of the pickiest eater- eaters whenever it comes to healthy food. Um, and anytime I would make something healthy a while ago, uh, he would be sketchy about it. <laughs> <laughs> would always tell me that whenever we were going to Abby's house or if Abby was coming over or something and she was bringing food, he was excited because he's like, anything Abby makes, I don't care. Get all your recipes from her because her food is fantastic. Your chocolate chip cookies were like his favorite thing. In the world. Oh, well, those are, those are semi-famous. So, you know, <laughs> so, um, cause I know like some, you know, some parents and stuff might get scared listening to this. Like, Oh, I don't, I don't know if I could do this or something. Listen, I've made those chocolate chip cookies. They're very simple to make. They're so good. Your kids are going to love them. And she has this entire community also even dedicated to, she has a gluten-free sourdough course. And I'll let her talk more about this um, and a regular sourdough course and stuff. But she is just a wealth of reason. She's actually the person I called, when was that, last week? I oh, am yeah. like trying to navigate the whole raw dairy system right now. Um, and we don't have a lot of choices where I live. We don't, like any raw dairy down here is going to come from goat farms. Uh, and I don't like goat milk. And so we don't have a lot of regular cow's milk raw options. And if we do, like our raw milk is very, very expensive down here. It's like $13, $14 for a half gallon. We don't, I, I can't buy it. Uh, and so I had called Abby. I was in the middle of the grocery store. I'm like, I don't know which one of these yogurts is the best one to get. <laughs> so she helped me figure that out on the spot. Abby, what are some like announcements or any offers or anything you're off, uh, you might have for anyone listening on ways that you could help them or connect with them? So my biggest project, kind of like you mentioned just a minute ago, are my bread classes. Uh, it's not necessarily just bread, but I have two separate communities and online courses. One of them is, I call them Soulful Sourdough. <laughs> because it was like a heart project, something I worked really hard on. Um, Super clever. Create. I love that. Well, thanks. <laughs> and learn. <laughs> uh, because it took a while. I was intimidated to do it. And then once I learned it, it just like blossomed into this really cool idea. And I created the Soulful Sourdough course. I have, um, that's just for learning the art of regular old sourdough uh, with regular flour, not the gluten-free one. And I have a ton of bonus recipes in there. I walk you through it step by step. Um, 
recorded videos. There's a Facebook community in there as well. And we kind of just bounce around ideas and learn things from each other in there. And it's super fun. And then like a probably six months into that course, I had started getting a bunch of people asking me to do gluten-free. Um, and I was definitely putting that one off because like the stigma around some gluten-free bread and like baked goods is like, oh, it's like cardboard. <laughs> So mm. I was really afraid to like stumble into that and try baking bread that was actually just going to taste like cardboard. So that one took forever for me to like perfect. And it's only getting better from like, especially in the last six months, like the art has really expanded. And I can, I can confidently say that the bread that I created in that class is like, the best gluten-free bread I've ever eaten in my life. Um, and because I have high standards, like I don't want people to feel like they're <laughs> missing out, like, especially if you have to be gluten-free, cause like I have a few people that um, buy stuff from me um, as a friend, like I'll, I'll sell my gluten-free baked goods here and there. Um, like kids that are going to a birthday party and need like a really good cupcake or a chocolate chip cookie or, mm buns you know if they're going to a cookout or something like I want them to be really good and I don't want mm -hmm. this poor kid to just get like crappy cardboard gluten-free bun with like canola oil in it so no I'm gonna take really good care of these people and uh my family do because I want it to be good and I want it to be enjoyed and as it should be you know like food is wholesome nourishment not just because it tastes good but because the process is enjoyed too so that gluten-free community has really grown a lot this year. Um, I think I have like 60 some members in there right now and it's That's really amazing. fun. It's really fun. And she teaches so much and it's not even just the bread. Like you have so many recipes. I've seen you make like the cinnamon rolls um, mm -hmm. and like different muffins and cookies and stuff. There's so many different recipes in that. Uh, and you just provide so much knowledge. And like I said, there is an Abby standard. Like I have <laughs> been to the birthday parties that Abby puts on for her kids where she makes all of the birthday party food from scratch and the cake and stuff. Guys, you would never even know it's gluten-free. It tastes so freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going for. Like I don't want people to even question it. So that's good to hear. <laughs> well, Abby, where can people find you so they can connect with you? Well, I guess I'm on Instagram. Um, so <laughs> I, I've changed my name a few times. I think it's just Abby at Abby B. Hanlon right now. Don't quote me on that, but. Uh, That's I exactly what it is. I just pulled okay, it up. Okay, cool. I went basic. Um, <laughs> that's where <laughs> I'm at. I post bread stuff on there. I post day-to-day -day life stuff on there. Um, not too often. I'm not as active as I once was, but if you message me, I'll definitely respond. Um, and that's where you can also find my course information. I have highlights there with sourdough stuff and baked goods. I have a ton of bread pictures because it's so pretty sometimes. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's where my course information is. So if you're interested in that, just message me and that's where you'll find me. Thank you so much, Abby. This has been awesome. And I'm so excited. Uh, for our listeners to listen and hear of the ways that they can start incorporating some healthier eating habits in with their family and feel more confident about it, not so overwhelmed. Because um, it can feel really overwhelming from a budget standpoint, from a cooking standpoint, um, mm -hmm. just, all, just all of the above. And so I just thank you for your time here and the wealth of knowledge that you have brought into today's episode. So thank you, Abby. Absolutely. Thank you. You've just listened to another episode of the Myrrh Bearing Millennial Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to another week. And I've linked everything below for you so you can connect with Abby, see her, get to know her, DM her, tell her hi, tell her you got sent from the Myrrh Bearing Millennial Podcast, and see all the info on her sourdough courses and everything else that she's offering because they're pretty awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. And again, if you loved what you heard, would you please take just a quick minute to rate the episode, share it with your friends, and comment below how much you loved it so that way it can help the show get discovered. Thank you so much for tuning in to another week, and we'll see you next Wednesday.